What is up? My name is Sam, and today we will be doing a recap of this weekend's um, UFC 288 and of this weekend's NBA playoff games. Let's start off with UFC 28, uh, 288. We had Henry Cejudo versus Aljamain Stern as a main card, but let's start off with the beginning of the card. Of course, we had Charles Jordan um, defeating Kron Gracie. That one, this fight was kind of a... I mean, Charles, look, he looked like the most act, the more active fighter. You could tell Kron was kind of... Kind of slow, trying to get back in the rhythm, but 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 um Charles was not letting him like have anything. He wasn't letting him have any takedowns, nothing. He was having great position to allow him to not, you know, for um for Gracie just to hold him down and be able to, you know, work him on the floor and be able to hold do his jujitsu what he does. He was able to do that, stay on top of him and easily be get off of him and standing on the feet. And there there is a funny moment where Gracie does stay on the floor, you know, scooting his butt towards towards Charles to try to get the takedown. But I mean this fight this fight was it was a good fight on um, on Charles' side, but Kron just kinda his his side made it kinda boring for him wanting to stay on the ground. And I understand um on the ground he, he does have that advantage, but at least you gotta at least work for it for that spot. But I mean right I mean it is what it is. It's a good it's a good beginning fight. And then we had Mofsar versus Diego Lopez and Diego Lopez was very, very, very impressive in this one, even though he did lose, but he was very impressive I believe he had five days notice in this fight, and to have it like so close for him, for a decision, I mean that's 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 crazy, and he he's an absolute dog. I mean I can't wait to see the rest of his fights um, he has in his career, and then we had Jan. I'm just say Jan. I don't want to disrespect her. I don't want to say her name wrong, but I'm gonna say Jan versus Jessica Andrade. Jessica Andrade came out blazing. You know she wanted that knockout. She was she was going at Jan and just trying to throw down, throw down, and then Jan just. Slipped under and then boom, hit her straight on the head, headshot down, TKO win, KO win by Jan. And now I'm here for it. I'm here for the hype. Um, Jan versus Wei Li Ziang. That is gonna be a banger, and I hope it happens soon. I hope they can do it. That fight is going to be great. I mean, I have Wei Li. Wei Li, I think, is the more well-rounded and better fighter in her prime right now. But I can't wait for this fight. This I think this fight is going to be a war and one of the better strawweight fights we've seen in a while. In the co-main event, we have Bilal Muhammad versus Gilbert Burns. And, oh man. I mean, it sucks with Gilbert Burns because you could tell from the beginning. I mean, this team kind of showed also that he was already dealing with an injury. I mean, this is like his third, fourth fight of this year. I mean, I mean what do you expect? His body was going to break down eventually. And it sucks, to, it sucks to say, I mean, this was a shot for him to get the title. But... I mean, he needed to fight. I mean, he showed that he is tough and he can fight. Hopefully, he can he can recover and his injury is not too bad. But Bilal Muhammad just looked super, super, super sharp. I mean, everything was going his way. The leg kicks were nasty to the body of of Gilbert Burns and Bilal. Man, I'm hoping between Leon and and um and Kobe Covington, I hope Leon gets the win. Cause I mean, I, I want to see. Um, Bilal Muhammad versus Edwards too, because you know the first one ended with a knife poke by Leon. So we don't really know who really who would have won that fight. But I'm hoping Leon versus Bilal Muhammad, and then the main event did not disappoint at all. I mean, it wasn't the finish that any of them said, but here, Aljamain Sterling showed why he is the champ. It was it was a very close fight, but Aljamain was more active. He he had more takedowns than Henry Cejudo. Then I don't think anybody really had that going, and he just looked stronger. He looked more physical. But I mean, I mean, Henry Cejudo still has it. He still has it in the tank. But here, I mean, the champ stays the champ. I mean, congratulations to Aljamain Sterling. And I mean, now we have the whole altercation of him versus O'Malley in the whole ring. I didn't like that. Um, I think they should have just announce it later. And you know, in the press conference, like Dana always does. And then Marab stealing his. Uh, it was a whole mess. I didn't. I didn't like that. But um, Sterling versus Sean O'Malley. I think they're. Targeting it for UFC 292, man. I mean, I mean, I have much respect for for Sterling. I've been kind of off the bandwagon with the whole knee thing, but you know what? Has he has my respect? He has been. I mean, he has three title defenses. That's been the most since a while. And here, I think I'm gonna go with. Um, I think if the fight happens, whenever the fight happens, I'm gonna go with Sterling. I don't think O'Malley has the ground game to be able to to stop. To stop Sterling at all, and he's going to be way more physical, way stronger. But I mean, he has to take him down. O'Malley has hands. O'Malley can strike. But I mean, I think that's a lot to ask for O'Malley. I mean, we haven't seen him. I think we should have seen him fought like a 
Corey Sanhagen, a Marab, or I mean, in, 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 or, or at least a uh, Cheeto Vera again, like some, something like that. But it is what it is. I mean, here Sterling Yon, I, was, I mean Sterling O'Malley, have O'Malley, and and we had tweets, we had tweets this morning as I'm recording this video. Um, Henry Cerruto tweeted out that he wants to fight Marab, and that was almost one of my topics today. What's next for Marab? Because if Sterling beats O'Malley, um, as you know, Marab is next. So he's either going to have to move up, he's going to have to have Sterling move up, but then Sterling defends, and then he has, he's going to come back eventually if he loses or something like that. It's like, what's the whole deal with him? But here, we have Henry Cerruto and Marab. They both you know, agreed on Twitter, which doesn't mean nothing in these days anymore. But here... That kind of takes him. That kind of takes Marab or steps him back, but if he beats Cejudo, and and Sterling wins versus O'Malley, what do we do? What do we do? These two have to fight eventually. I know they're teammates and stuff, and I know it sucks, but eventually you're gonna have to fight. And if you don't want to be the champion, you don't want to fight your guy, then you're gonna have to move up, or you're gonna have to move down to 125 and fight Brendan Moreno or something. I mean, something needs to happen because I think, I think personally, Marab has all the weapons to beat Sterling, and. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a little controversial, but I mean, I don't. I think Marab can beat Ster out of all everybody. I think he can beat him. Um, I would like. I think it would either be him fighting Henry Cejudo or him fighting a Corey Sanhagen. But it is what it is at the end of the day. But I just hope they figure something out. If if they have to eventually fight, they figure something out where they can fight and you know still be boys. I mean, it sucks they do share the, share the same gym, but I mean it's it's part of the game. And then we had some news. Um, Bronny James has committed to the University of Southern California. I saw this coming. He's going to stay home. I mean, good for them. Good for USC. I mean, that's a, that's a great program. And that's all I'm going to say. And the 76ers tied the series yesterday versus the Boston Celtics. James Harden and MVP Joel Embiid both balled out. They both showed out. Jason Tatum had a horrible, horrible first half. I believe he had two points. But he still ended up with 24 and like 18 rebounds, which I mean, good for them. But they did they did come back from a little lead. But it sucks to suck you that you did not be, was able to get the job done at the end of the day. Um, Marcus Smart, man, shot, props to him. But he did have two missed game winners um, in the fourth quarter. He shoots it, he misses, going overtime. James Harden hits the three pointer to take the lead and pretty much the game winning shot, and then. Um, Marcus Smart makes the shot, but he has it. He the ball still in his hand whenever the buzzer goes off, and it is what it is right there, two two. And man, could this be the year for the um, 76ers to make the Eastern Conference Finals? I mean, that's for for me. Everyone's saying for Joel and B to make the finals. For me, it's going to be a good season for him, just for him to make the ECF because he's never made it, and that's all I want for him versus if it's the Heat or the Knicks, and. I think pretty much between the Celtics versus um, 76ers, this this could be the team that represents the East and that can go to the finals. So if he wins this, I mean, I don't want to say it's a lock because Jimmy Butler has been on another level, which we'll talk about right now. And the Knicks has also been amazing defensively. We have that. We have the 76ers tying the series 2-2. And the other game yesterday, we had the Phoenix Suns also tying the series 2-2, which I was saying in the last video, they can possibly get swept and... I mean, it is what it is, because um, Devin Booker has been on another level. He's arguably been the best player in the playoffs so far, and him and Kevin Durant just doing all the load work, and then Landry Shamit finally had a, a big game, which they really needed. Jokic having 51 points, 11 assists, and 4 rebounds, and it still wasn't enough, which, which is crazy. It just shows you how good Devin Booker and Kevin Durant is. And I mean the the highlight of this this game pretty much is Jokic pushing the pushing the owner of the Suns, which I mean he was kind of wrong for it because it's like just give him just give him back the ball man like why you like like I mean I get it's your team and stuff but it's like still man you got to give him ball back if they're trying to play a game, but and I think the owner said that no one should get fined no one should get fired or nothing like that. I mean it is what it is but that's just it's just hilarious man and I don't think Jokic knew that that was the owner, but. I mean, that's, that's just hilarious. And then we have today's games. We have two games today. Um, two game fours. We have the New York Knicks versus the Miami Heat in Miami. And the Knicks really need to pull this off. They really need to pull off the win. That's who I have them winning today. Gabe Vincent can have a big game. He can't. Um, Duncan Robinson can't have a game. Um, Max Strews can't have a game. 
like, I mean, I'd rather have those guys have a game than Jimmy Butler have 50 because that's how they win. Jimmy Butler can't have 40. But it's like you gotta you gotta limit the other guys at least. Like you gotta limit Jimmy. You just gotta limit everybody. You gotta stop Jimmy Butler and limit everybody else. You know, make Bam out of bio, have the big game. Have, make let, I'd rather let him because he hasn't been that aggressive. I mean, he hasn't. I mean, the whole playoffs he hasn't been the Bam that we all know and love. But here I have the Knicks winning tonight, and I'm hopefully taking the Knicks in seven. And last but not least, the last game of the day we have the L.A. Lakers versus the Golden State Warriors. And this this year this series is kind of weird because it's like, you know, we had the big Anthony Davis game, the big Anthony Davis uh, stinker, and then it was like a decent Anthony Davis game, and then now are we gonna get another stinker? But here, man, because it's because it's like take one, win one, take one, and I think that's what it is. It's gonna be like that till next game. Um, I have the Warriors winning game four to tie the series, and then I have them winning game five, and then possibly. I mean, they need this. They can't go down three one. I mean, we know they can come back from a 3-1 lead, but you, you don't want to do that against LeBron James. The I mean, the numbers, the resume says it all. It doesn't it doesn't work out your way if you go 3-1 against LeBron James. And LeBron James here needs to have a decent game, at least be, you know, semi-aggressive because we've shown that they are a lot better whenever he is aggressive because that gets Austin Reeves going, who hasn't been really active this, since the Grizzly series. Rui Hachimura has pretty much fell off a cliff, three-point shooting. That's what they need from him. And here... I mean, like I said earlier, I got the Warriors taking four and five and hopefully taking six, but I think this could also be a possible seven-game series. If we can have two seven-game series to go to the conference finals, I'm, I'm cool with that. That is amazing. But here, I want you to comment down below your takes for this weekend, which one's your, your favorite games, who do you have winning in the playoffs so far, and don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time with more content.